If I take a look at my number line, if I'm taking a number over here, it is bigger than 10, but it's not at the same time smaller than minus 10. That is why I have to use the word or, because it's either bigger than 10, or I'm going to find a number on this side which will be smaller than minus 10. But should I take a number, and I'll represent the number by way of a little man, between the 10 and the minus 10, then this little man is both smaller than 10 and bigger than minus 10. So just a little bit of understanding with regards to why we use the word or in the one case and why we use the word and in the other. So very quickly, if we have absolute value of x minus 1 is bigger than 5, what are we going to do? This is what we need for the exam. I've spoken a lot about the understanding of it. But in the exam, when you get this, this is what you need to do. You need to say it's bigger than. Therefore, the inside will be bigger than 5 or the inside will be smaller than minus 5. Think of the number line. To the right of 5, which is bigger than, or to the left of minus 5, which is smaller than. And then we finish off. And we finish off quite easily. However, should you have absolute value less than, the trick is in the inequality sign. Less than, then we're going to look at the numbers that are situated between the 5 and the minus 5. And because those numbers are both less than 5 and bigger than minus 5, we're going to sandwich it. And if we don't sandwich it and we put the word or, we're in trouble because it's wrong. You either put the word and, you have two statements with the word and between, or you must sandwich it that way. How did I get this last line? To get rid of the minus 1, I added 1, added 1, added 1 across. And that's how I got the last line. So let's look at the first part of the challenge question. We had 6 over the absolute value of 3 minus x is bigger than 2. The first complication here, remember these are challenge questions. They're not supposed to be straightforward. It's a challenge. For those of you that are doing standard grade mathematics, just bear with us. Try and understand what's going on here. Try and show some interest because these are challenge questions for higher grade students. In fact, absolute values are not part of your standard grade exam paper. They are part of the higher grade exam paper only. So a big higher grade only. The good news is that if you're in grade 11, you can be watching. So over here, we have the 6 over the absolute value of 3 minus 6 is bigger than 2. Right. Tip number 1. The absolute value of 5 is the same as the absolute value of minus 5. Inside an absolute value, we're allowed to change the sign. So the absolute value of A minus B is exactly the same as the absolute value of B minus A. So the very first thing I would do is I would change that absolute value of 3 minus x to x minus 3. That is the first thing I would do because it's much easier, much, much, much easier. Did I say much easier? I mean really much easier if you use x minus 3 rather than 3 minus x. When we are solving inequalities, we need to be aware that we cannot always multiply through by the LCD because we're not sure if that's a positive or a negative quantity. In this case, we can because we know that the absolute value function is always positive. In the case where there's an absolute value, we know it's always positive, so we can multiply through by the LCD. Heather will show you in the next example that if you remove those absolute values, you will not be able to multiply through because you don't know if that expression is positive or negative. Moving on here, going on to a new screen, we have 6 bigger than 2 absolute value of x minus 3. 
I'm going to change this around so that it reads with the absolute value on the left. And if I do that, what's going to happen to the sign? The bigger than needs to now become smaller than because it's the 6 that's bigger than the, that left hand, the right hand side. So if I swap the sides, that one would be smaller than the 6. Now divide both sides by 2 and there you have your simple absolute value inequality. All difficult inequalities will become simple absolute value inequalities. They'll reduce to one of those two types. What did we say if we have a less than? We said if we have a less than, we have to be looking at the numbers between 3 and the minus 3. So what are we going to do? We're going to go x minus 3 is less than 3 and bigger than minus 3. And we're going to write it as a statement like that. If we choose not to write it as a statement like that, what are we going to do? We're going to say x minus 3 is less than 3. And what's the word that we have to use? If we're between 3 and minus 3, we both less than 3 and at the same time bigger than minus 3. So we would have to use the word and. How did I get rid of the minus 3? Uh, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. Great question, don't you think? It's super question. And you think I'm finished. Ha ha. There's still the challenge part that has to come back. If we go back to the original first part of this challenge question, we see that this here was the question given to us. That was the question. And if we look at our answers, if we look at our answers, oy, if we look at our answers, what happens here is we saying our answer is any answer that lies between naught and 6. Nothing wrong. We have to now say and. We cannot have x equal to 3. Why not? Well, let's go back and look at our question. What happens when you put 3 into this inequality? You get 6. Replace the x with 3. What happens? You get 6 over zero. And you have to see that as a brilliant, strong, loving of challenge questions mathematician. You have to come to the end of this and see that that x cannot be three. You've included it in this your solution and you've got to be alert to the fact that you've got to exclude it. What is <laughs>